Welcome to Three Men in a Blog, and today we're just going to discuss some of the high or low points of the week, leading on from the signing of the agreement for a referendum. The Edinburgh Agreement. agreement. The Edinburgh Agreement, as it will go down in history, and I've no doubt they'll have a copy of that in the National Library of Scotland. Um, so let's start off with Stuart. What's your high, low point of well, the week? Well, I suppose naming it the Edinburgh Agreement first makes it sound, makes it a bit pompous, but it could be that important. We already have the St Andrews Agreement that the Irish talk about all the time at the moment. There are many. It's a Belfast Agreement, there are all kinds of agreements, so yeah. Um, I made an effort to go up to St Andrews House on Monday morning um, to see what was going on, and uh, there was a huddle of maybe about a hundred journalists corralled. They weren't on the road, they were, there is enough space behind the wall and right in front of the main entrance of uh, St Andrew's House to squeeze them in, but the police wouldn't let me get anywhere near that. There were three protesters <laughs> with Scottish flags trying to get close. They weren't, couldn't get close enough. I believe somebody did shout boo when that camera appeared. Apparently that did make the... Um, so I was rather disappointed. Their security was enormous, but then it always is when the Prime Minister is in town. As far as the agreement and reaction to it, the reaction, generally speaking, on Monday I was taken by Michael Moore's fairly reasonable comments on, on the issue. He seems to have developed a, diff a, a very diplomatic view on, yeah, the, on, on the issues. He's got a very statesman-like approach I think. He, he seems to have gained the respect of, well certainly the SNP. We stopped saying silly things and perhaps given what we've been saying about Willie Rennie in recent weeks at First Minister's questions, perhaps there's been a little bit of a chat in Lib Dem circles. Do you not think it's, uh, I mean really with the Lib Dems um, we're unpopular, here we go let's try something to get us back again. I mean um, would you really trust anything that the Liberal Democrats say, and should the Scots? I mean, are the Scots all students? Uh, well, the Liberal Democrats, having waited till after the signing of the Edinburgh Agreement to produce their Home Rule Bill, which is, hasn't, I mean, a snowball's chance in hell doesn't cover it. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. There is no way that any major UK political party is going to take that on board. They can afford to come out with that, frankly, crap, because they're never going to be in a position to introduce it. It's just a rehash of what they've been saying for donkey's years, in any it's case. Federalism. They want a federal UK. It's garbage. They have done exactly what they argued against. We can't have two questions on the uh, <laughs> referendum ballot paper because it will muddy the wars. But here you go. Here's a home rule suggestion that isn't going to muddy the wars. That's exactly what it's going to do. It's what it's designed to do. They didn't have the courage to come out with it in time for it to be discussed as part of the referendum. Uh, the whole thing is just a, an exercise in manipulation. I like this bit about having... Uh, we can't manage more than two questions, a yes or a no. Apparently they've just published uh, the Icelandic constitutional <laughs> referendum. And it's got six questions six, on it. Six so questions. Apparently People in Iceland are a lot smarter than people in Scotland. Well, that's arguable as well because, I mean, they just told the banks to go and take a run and jump to themselves. Their economy has turned Is it growing? Um, they prosecuted the Prime... On it, six percent unemployment? Yeah, they prosecuted their, their, their Prime Minister that was in charge when the banks... For the balls up. But we're in hock to pay the people that caused it in the first place. Oh, well, yeah, well, nice. it's, it's, I uh, know, uh, we, we don't go there. But no, as we're no, talking no. about uh, the Liberal Democrats, what do you think of Dougie Alexander, um, who's now asking the Labour Party to think very, very carefully about this and to possibly outflank the independence vote by going for basically Devo Max? Yeah, but that's what they're going to do now. They've spent, what, the last year arguing against two questions. Now what they're going to do, now that they've got the one question that I presume they believe will force people to vote no, they're going to throw in lots of other questions. It's the old pig and the Pope from 79. It's fun. 
Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And we will probably end up in a 79th position when after, yes, they'll, they'll offer this, that, and the next thing. Possibly, and I think it is just possibly, uh, they would cause the Yes campaign to lose the vote. And then they'll go, oh, well, let's, let's have a look. And then there wasn't enough people for, you know. Um, well, we need to get a C into Lies and obfuscation. A, a C, because it's going to be confusion there. A C. A C. What's for a C? confusion. Oh, right. Oh, right. Fun. Because the Liberal Party have come out with their home rule bullshit. The Labour Party are going to be thinking about saying something. They might not come out with it hard on paper. In fact, they're not going to. I mean, uh, Joanna Lamont, who wants her debate, what does she want to debate about? She's got this committee meeting for the next two years to discuss stuff. She's nothing to, to give to a debate. It's a kind of 40, oh, section 43, what was it? Uh, no, section 4. It's moment for the, Scottish Labour to abandon all the principles of universal benefits that they've stood by no, for the last 15 years. They're not going to do that. The, the no, outcome, they're going to, dis, they're the going to outcome, discuss in Haber. The outcome of this discussion is going to be same game. It'll be exactly the same thing. There is no way they're going to abandon universal benefits. They're not going to do it. Uh, who, but, they've got, but they've got two years to throw brickbats at the SNP on that subject. Watch and see what happens. I don't know, I might, when, I they, when they report just before the next Scottish election, it will be it will be a twist. There'll be a well we'll keep this, we'll throw that out, but we'll put this in. It'll depend completely on the focus groups. There'll be nothing to do with genuine Labour Party policy. No mention at all of taxation. At all. I doubt it's even on the table for the discussion. One, you, the important point of that committee, whatever they call it, a commission or a, a, an inquiry, is that it's not scheduled to report until after the referendum. So that's the key issue about that. Mm. Uh, there's going to be an awful lot of confusion, um, scaremongering. But just to change slightly, just to go outside Scotland um, and the effect that the Edinburgh Agreement has had on Catalonia, oh, yes. Canada, Flanders. I mean, Arturo Mas, the Catalan president, says this totally changes the game when it comes to um, countries that are really made up of, that, that really have small nations within them and have a very, very, very strong um, self-esteem. Um, and this, I think, of actually Scotland could actually give them that impetus. It gives them particularly the international law, um, everything else is starting to set precedence. Is, is the Catalan help. independence movement considered right wing? Not, uh, no, not as far no, as I'm no, aware of that. There, no. was, there was a piece, now was it in the Scotsman, I can't remember where it was, that said basically we should be proud of the fact that the only national movement that's left of centre is the Scottish one. Now certainly in Flanders it's right wing. What's happening in Greece looks very right wing. But Catalan has yeah, never been a right wing in the Greece, yeah. yeah, but Greece is, doesn't have a, a region or a, a nation within Greece that wants its independence, no. does it? But look, here's, here's a couple of things. But then they're talking if, about well, nationalists. Yeah, but if you want a European perspective, in, in the last couple of weeks, um, there's a region, well, Venice has now announced that it's considering seceding from Italy. There's actually a German speaking region in the Tyrol, bordering Austria. Westphalia? Sud Tyrol, South Tyrol, um, which a population of half a million, they are offering Rome 15 billion euros to buy themselves out of having to pay any taxes to Rome, basically. Not for freedom, but for complete financial autonomy. They're offering money at a time when Rome needs it, 15 billion euros. Well, the good thing about it is that gives the Tories and the Labour Party, lots of ideas for how they throw more crap into the pond to muddy the waters. <laughs> Look, at also in Europe, don't forget, um, the Flemish National Party, National Party won, took over the, the control of Antwerp, which is uh, the biggest city in Flanders. I, I, I have no idea. They, they can write treaties with other countries with no, <coughs> completely under their own auspices without anything from the, the Belgian government. You've got to bear in mind that Belgium was, <laughs> Belgium was invented by the British and the French and the Germans. 
Yeah. But going on to just something you said there about nationalism and this, this, this automatic assumption that if you're nationalist, you're right wing. I think if you're a nationalist looking for your independence, for your self-determination, you're not necessarily right wing. And if you look at right wing nationalist movements, now I'm thinking of Franco, Hitler, Mussolini, Conser Jobbik, no, no, they're, no, all, yeah. they're all movements within the a nation. The Conservative Party is a nationalist yeah, but they're, they're movements party. within a nation who, British look, nationalist party. Yeah, who look to um, minorities within that nation that they want to remove, that they think are doing something. That, I think, is where, you know, and, and they're, they're heavily influenced by just nasty right wing. Um, kind of dogma like uh, like Franco and like in Spain. You know, I said today I had a, a, a comment from a friend about the Catalonian situation in the world and uh, he kind of more or less said you know from he's automatically anti-nationalist. I pointed out to him that that also be, that, that the biggest problem in nationalism in this country is actually the the warmongering right-wing nationalists cu currently running Britain. They're still who, empire loyalists at who, heart. Who apparently can use the same arguments to justify their independence from Europe as they object to as arguments for Scotland being independent. There's absolutely no problem with being a hypocrite if you're a politician. But then this week's been really, really incredible for the absolute garbage that's been printed. You're talking about the Express now. Oh, oh you mean this, that the UK is under I've, threat? I've got this somewhere. <laughs> Well, there is a report out this week, apparently by um, Rossi, the Royal United Services Institute, under the what's it? It's under the title of um, Defence Management Journal, and apparently Scottish defence forces would cost 1.4 billion a year, as opposed to what we pay now, 3.5 billion a year for our share of the British defence forces, and for that we'd have a perfectly adequate. You would have 23 warships. We'd have uh, 60 jets, you know, be, we'd have an adequate regional defence force. Well, of course we will. Scotland, as an independent nation, would be one of the money. Uh, richest nations in the world. Sixth. Yeah, Sixth. I mean, absolutely no problem. But the but whole... these, the, this happened yesterday and the day before. The, the economic argument got blasted all over Twitter. And when... To the extent that I went back to the JERS figures, although they don't include everything. I mean, I have been told by somebody who's an economist and I trust, for instance, that the amount of money the MOD allocates as spent in Scotland is nothing like what is really spent. It's way over what's normally spent. There's a huge section of it that's, you know, what's Scotland's contribution to Afghanistan? Financially, how do you work that out? You know, so these are figures that can be manipulated by both sides. So the JRs can't be depended on to be accurate. But then the Yes campaign basically admitted that Scotland got the 9.2 figure, 9.6 figure that the SNP use are figures as percentages of two different numbers. So in fact, Scotland gets 10 billion to cover a deficit which is 20% of GDP, uh, GDP. Now you're just juggling figures. Yeah, and I well, think, and no, I think... but th th this is kind of the point. Yeah. So as soon as that was admitted, if you like, by the Yes campaign, everybody in the No campaign retweeted it. No, Scotland not. have a 20% deficit. No. Nobody mentioned that the deficit for Ireland, Wales and England is 24%. Well, this is it. You're, you're already no. just confusing the, the listener and the viewer. Yeah, yeah, well, 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 that, that's kind the of the best point way to I'm sum it up is that lies, it, damn lies, it, it, statistics. It, it, it's, it's fun, fear, uncertainty, and yeah. doubt. Just keep bringing it up, regardless of the truth. But that was the whole point. Even when the truth was admitted by both sides, even when they agreed on a figure, it was the omission by one side that made that figure look bad for the other side. Well, let me point out that the best answer to this kind of nonsense is to identify where there is agreement or where both sides have said, yes, Scotland can afford to be independent. And that has been admitted by huge numbers of people on the no side. Of course. So, I mean, the, the, the detail is pointless. The, the detail's important. No, the be detail well, is just confusing. Sure. Sure. The detail's important because it's the first thing that people who are 
intending to vote no, bring up. You have to be able to make the well, case. Well, my argument is that important people, including the Prime Minister Down, have admitted that Scotland could afford to be independent. I'm sorry, nobody listens to the Prime Minister. They read the All Daily right, but, Express. But there is little point talking about detail. People want eyes. People's eyes glass over when they get when you when when you start talking well, about figures like that. I stood stood in my kitchen with two women yesterday, explained it to them, and they both looked at me quite frankly as though I was lying. So I went to the stats and showed them. And People do not listen. I agree with you. They're not interested in these silly... They do not listen, but they do read the record, the Sun, the Express, yes. the Scotsman. And it's why? Well, I mean, the Express. Yes, well, don't tell the truth. This is a direct quote from an article today. The confusion would also place Scots abroad at greater risk of child abduction, forced marriage or crime through the lack of UK consular assistance. What? What? I mean... Okay, all right, well, let me just come... So wait. we won't have any Scottish consulates? No, uh, let me have the, the report uh, uh, of course, with, uh, if we're no longer part of uh, a force that's invading Muslim countries, then travelling on a Scottish passport would be a much, tra a much safer option than travelling on a UK passport. Mm. True? Well, the, the paragraph before that, Britain's enemies would have the opportunity to exploit the uncertainty of distract or distraction caused by the upheaval of a split. Britain's but, enemies? But Britain wouldn't but, exist. We're not an independent country an yet, country. and we've already taken on enemies. Mm, all right. this is, well, it's all fear and uncertainty and doubt, and it yeah. is an endless argument. It's pointless arguing against it. And you're going to get more. This is just the start. They've just turned the on button on. They haven't even put the volume up yet. That, that was, That's very true. That was the totally predictable thing that was going to happen this week. Signed. SMP conference starting on the Thursday, and all we've had from just about every paper, I would say 80% of it, has been negative spin, and most of it inaccurate. Of course, and you'll get more. But just, mm -hmm. just to change tack slightly, um, Ian Bell had an article this week where he was looking at who is the most confident, yes and no. Now, the fact that you've got the spin and the hysteria gives you a kind of hint that it's probably the no, because it's... The least confident. Yeah, the least confident, um, that they're going to win. But it's, it's not so much looking at the polls, it's who actually gets off their butt and goes out to vote. And who's the confident? Who really wants it? You know, when you have a look at it, oh, I don't believe in independence, so I'm not bothering voting. Yeah, if you remember, to think, that is how it can be quite simplistic. I believe in it. I'm going out to vote. Mm -hmm. um, and you will get... Because, well, th there is quite a, uh, an element of the electorate that is either willingly ignorant or just doesn't really take any notice. So, I mean, you, there will be that impetus for the yes to go well, out. There, so that's percentages. There's, there's more, there's more than people who don't notice. There are a lot of people who deliberately, they've said it, have been said to me many times recently, they can't stand politics. Mm. Anything politics and they actually switch off. I don't mean the sex, but the brain. And they've said as much to me. No, I don't, they don't want anything to do with it. It's become a poisoned word on its own. Politics. Obama's brother was interviewed on Radio 4, the culture show yesterday, and the, the interviewer struggled to get him to say basically anything. But he said to him, how do you feel about your brother, you know, running again for president? And he went, is he? <laughs> Has it been four years? And the guy was gobsmacked. The interviewer was gobsmacked. He went, you don't pay any attention to politics. You know? Don't pay any attention to American but, but, politics but that's, or Kenyan politics. But that's it's really brilliant. actually... Or was he a Kenyan? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the best example ever. Is America probably, I mean, the richest nation, probably the thickest and most ignorant nation in the Western developed world. I mean, most of them couldn't even put on a map where they come from. Um, and, you know, they just have no, I mean, it's all prejudice and we hate these foreigners and they still believe this whole idea oh. that he's a Muslim uh, and he comes from another country uh, and he's probably a Martian or maybe even a Venusian. Um, well. Wallen's people worry. Wallen's people worry. Blogged on the danger of falling into this cult of personality thing that American politics have mm. got. And I'm sorry, Labour Party are already there. Yeah. Labour Party don't mention the SNP. They talk about Alex Salmon. That's all they talk about. Alex Salmon this, Alex Salmon that. And so, another band. That's it. Classic wee tweet. 
from somebody this morning who had spoken to someone who said, I can't vote for Alex Salmon because he's married to an older woman who has no kids. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, that's um, a good one. You know? Do you not well, think I, that's... I can't vote, vote for David Cameron because he left his kid in a pub. Uh, they want to say something that's uh, lived in a democratic country. But um, do you not think the major fallback of democracy is that Nazis get to vote? Well... Comment, please. Go on. Go on. No, just, just, no, no. Uh, Voting once every four years is not democracy, but that's what... I, I know. But, I mean, that, yeah, that's, well, um, I mean that's, that's... the amount of ignorance... That, that's kind of the point. You know, I mean, there'll be tranches of people who voted Tory because they believed they wouldn't change the NHS. Mm. Because they said they wouldn't change the NHS. That doesn't seem to make any difference anymore to the, no. the, 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 the par parties in power in this country. Which brings me on to what should go into the Scottish Constitution if and when we get one. Any politician lying should be taken out and shot. Preferably with catapults. I think it should be slow pay, a uh, slow... Before so torture. You'll need, to in, you'll need to increase the armed forces then if you're going to shoot all the live politicians. Right, okay. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be on shifts 24 hours a day. But that, uh, I mean, that's kind of... One of the things that will come out of this, I believe, is people will be... Whether it's a yes or no vote, people will be totally disillusioned, even worse than they are now, hmm. with the politics, uh, with the politicians. Who, I mean, you sit there and... Well, the point you made about stats using the same stats to twist to their particular viewpoint. I mean, but I mean, the Karen, but it's 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 came out. Yeah, but the, the detail is all pointless because oh. the, the average voter is not reading the detail. The, the average voter is reading the headlines in the Daily Record. Well, as I say, I mean, yesterday... I that went, doesn't include any figures. I went back to as near to the rate, raw data as I could get. I mean, I mean... Uh, but then I you were just to, arguing with a geek. Well, no, there was a lot. I mean, there was a Twitter storm about it yesterday. It was all about that. Yeah, it was all, all about it. Talking about the well, like 9.3 or 9.4, 9 9.6, which 15%, which 60%. I mean, it's it, it doesn't... Com you know, I've but, studied statistics in God knows how many well, courses. Well, Stuart, and, Stuart if, if we can get, what was it, an over 50... Uh, sorry, a 60-odd percent vote for the yes campaign, on the fact that everybody in Scotland will be 500 quid ahead better off. I'm sorry, it matters. Of course it does, but the detail doesn't matter. It's the facts. But there is, the there, there, there is a headline there that, uh, that we would say 300 pounds ahead on defence spending, apparently, if we were in yeah, There's a good start. But as we've been starting to rant and ramble a bit, uh, just, just shortly, your, what do you hope comes out of the SNP conference this <coughs> week? Weekend. Oh dear, that's a very good question. Well, they're going to win their um, new turn on, on NATO, and I'm actually very, very upset about that, um, because it's, there's no need for it. It's following, apparently, focus groups. I mean, how many people voting yes or no are going to care whether we're in NATO or not? Whereas the, it's, it's, it will, the, the, the U-turn will definitely affect an awful lot of committed SNP activists who won't be motivated, will be less motivated. In Greens and Peace Nixon, it, it, it's a, cetera, it's, yeah. You're losing, you're going back on principles, you're turning the SNP into just another crap party that tells lies and changes its mind. They have, they have to be yeah. really, really careful because Seriously. what differentiates them from the rest is they do have principles. Well, they don't have principles on, on NATO. Well, that that's why they have to be really... And it was the same about the Queen. Well, the ideal situation for them to be would be, would be a hung vote. Yeah. Leave it till 2006. No, it's not going to happen. They're going to carry it. Well, I think they got dragged into this thing called, which I get from um, members of the Labour Party when they talk about, oh, but this is real politic. Basically, uh, we don't need <laughs> principle. Um, well, just that's the way it is where they don't quite realise that the <laughs> reason the way, there to change yeah, it. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the reason that the way it is is because of their attitude with real politics. Real politics is the way it is. And like I said, they're there to change it. So I think we this, could... But this referendum is about where power lies, in London or Edinburgh. Simples. There is an election already scheduled for 2016, a general election for Scotland. The parties taking part in that general election will put forward their policies for the future of an independent Scotland, and that is a forum 
for issues like NATO, like almost anything you want to mention, not a referendum. A referendum is yes or no on a simple idea, not a, not a raft of policies. If I was seriously cynical about this, I would, I would definitely go for staying in NATO and come 2016 at that party conference to change policy back to pulling out. Because I'm sorry, everything they do now is about a yes vote. And if people feel safer and more comfortable with us being a member of NATO, fine. They can vote for the Labour Party in 2016. Yes, no point voting for the but, Liberal but Party. Nori, you're making an assumption which uh, Marco Biaggi, an, S uh, an uh, SNP MSP who wrote about in the Scotsman this morning, you make an assumption that isn't actually supported by facts. There is no polling being published to, that says it will affect the vote for yes or no, whether we're in or out of NATO. And that's an SNP MSP saying that. So I'm, I'm sorry. You swallowed the line. No, no, Angus no Robertson's I'm, line. I'm sorry. I, I would imagine the SNP have the best information about what what people feel of any of the parties. They didn't win the 2011 election not having the information. Well, do you not think I'm, it's... I'm quoting an SNP MSP in, in, in the Scotland. Yeah, who, stands, who stands his anti-NATO. But it's, but it's, but it's not NATO. That The whole thing about being in NATO is the way it affects the anti-nuclear. If we are members of NATO, um, it might be a fait accompli that we're obliged to keep our nuclear weapons. And that, I think, is what scares Sorry, they won't be people. our nuclear weapons. Well, they are our nuclear They're in Scotland. 10% ten, ten of them will be ours. Yeah. Well, well, I'm, not sure. still, I'm, not, still I'm not sure you divide up armaments that way. You actually, <laughs> a day when your country splits up, don't they arrange the well, armaments? Won't they belong to Scotland? No, well, they can have the warheads. Because they're in Scotland. They're in Scotland. They can yeah. have the warheads down south. We'll keep the, the launch of it. For launching. So, what about um, a parting comment? Because we have been ranting for. We've been on for a long time today. That's true. So I think we could do with a, a parting comment and then say cheer everybody. I was just glad that it was a nice sunny day when all the foreign journalists came to Edinburgh on Monday, and stood around in the cold and had to go into cafes to get coffee and sandwiches and and they didn't get wet and Edinburgh looked beautiful. So uh, you know that was a nice picture of Edinburgh because on Tuesday. It was atrocious weather. <laughs> <laughs> Shows we're British. I, I'm, I'm just hugely disappointed that nobody supporting the no campaign came up with any kind of positive spin. I, I actually think you're disappointed. I'm disappointed. You really expected something. I didn't. I didn't expect, but well, I had hoped. Is it a parting comment? I okay, had hoped that I've said my. The heavier hitting media outlets could have done it. I mean, the BBC has been absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Call K in the morning on bloody, what is it, Radio Scotland. Oh, bias isn't the word for it. Um, and if that's the way it's going to continue, it's just going to be a complete guddle, which will suit the number campaign. Well, it's nothing like consistency. Um, cold weather, even when it's sunny in Edinburgh, and lying media, or biased media. Um, and thanks very much if you've managed to listen, and we'll see you next Thursday.